Yeah, so I'm uh, Steve Arklax from the University of Helsinki. So I'm representing our paper, uh, Second Order Document Similarity Metrics for Transformers, uh, which I co-authored with Niki Loppi and Arto Klami. And Arto Klami is from University of Helsinki and Niki Loppi from NVIDIA Technologies. Uh, so, so the similarity usually uh, when it's... Uh, when it's measured using the static word embeddings, it's usually best measured using these second order metrics I actually talked about in the previous uh, previous presentation, and especially using the covariance of these embeddings. Uh, but because of transformers, uh, these static embeddings, so word to vec or fast text or, or these kind of embeddings have a kind of been less important tool uh, in the, uh, in the uh, latest research. Uh, mostly because of the, they have much more uh, representational power, so they are more efficient uh, compressing information into these shorter vector representations. Uh, in this uh, in this work, we explored how uh, if, if we can use these matrix metrics and second order representations also in the context of transformers, and then we evaluated in a few few experiments. Uh, so the second order metric is uh, uh, is a metric that is uh, when we use uh, matrices instead of vectors. So the metric is just a, a function that takes inputs as uh, uh, matrices and outputs real values. And of course, since we have to somehow encode the uh, encode the documents as matrices, the matrices there are then some choices to be made. So the simplest way would be just to stack everything into one uh, uh, one huge matrix where we get then n times d uh, d matrix where the n is the number of words or tokens and then the d is the dimensionality for the word embeddings. Uh, the problem here is though that uh, since the especially in the full uh, full length documents the n may can be huge. Uh, which then will make the computational and spatial requirements much higher uh, than is usually uh, reasonable to compute. So to, in order to kind of alleviate this issue, we represent the documents here as covariance matrices, both full rank, so just the full uh, covariance matrix, which is roughly just the, uh, the document representation times its transpose, and then we develop this uh, low rank version of it. So where we take some kind of uh, uh, matrix factorization or any kind of dimensional reduction uh, method and then drop the dimensionality for the covariance matrix. Uh, here we used SVD. So this allows us to drop the dimensionality uh, down to D times K where K is the amount of components that you wish to preserve. And for the baseline comparisons, we then use just the, the usual mean pooling, where uh, where we just get then vector out of it. Uh, so this is the basic process. So we have the word embeddings, which we then stack into a document. And then depending on the pooling function, we either have the vector representation or the covariance representation. Where here the focus is on the covariance representations, since these are the matrix matrix representations. And here's just the illustration how these look in the space. Uh, so basically, the documents uh, when they're presented with vectors are just points in the uh, points in the embedding space, and then when we represent them with uh, covariances, then we get these kind of uh, elements that have mass, and uh, they can be distributed over different dimensions in a different ways. So they capture more information in that sense. Uh, so because we want to then uh, we need to define a metric. So here we use this uh, uh, metric based on Frobenius inner product, uh, uh, which is then normalized. Uh, so similarly as in the previous presentation, I uh, explained that there is uh, you can create this very general metric by using this uh, uh, these norms. And in the Frobenius inner product, it's it's very nice that we can actually get everything just using the traces and traces just the sum of the diagonal items. So it requires no uh, no complex computation of any kind of uh, like singular values or some sorts. Uh, you can do this also using singular values. So uh, 
if you compute the Shatten Shatten norm, then the singular value where the uh, the p uh, equals two will get you to exact the same. But then you have to calculate those singular values, which is which is much much more heavy, and with transformers, it it can be very unstable. Uh, now then to compare uh, compare with the baseline, we then just use the the usual cosine similarity. You could use basically also Euclidean distance, but but I think uh, in most cases the cosine similarity is more uh, more familiar. And here you can see kind of the similar form of both of these. Uh, so the cosine is just the inner product divided by the norms of them. And here exactly when with the matrices, you have also the inner product of the matrices divided by their norms. And this is kind of the visual representation of how this uh, differ. So in the cosine the cosine setting, we have two vectors, and in the in the second order uh, here, it's called the Frobenius distance. Uh, you have matrices as inputs, and these are specifically in this case we use the covariance uh, encoding. So what we have defined uh, defined this uh, way of representation, and and then this metric, we can form uh, form. <clears throat> the similarity metrics uh, similarly to the to the previous presentation so then for mean we have just mean pooling and well the full rank so the second order matrix we have these covariance representations and the low rank versions of those covariance representations and these can be now used as an input or uh, as a part of the triplet loss uh, so uh, here is how it would look. It's a bit confusing, but here the idea is that this is just the distance between A and P, which is the anchor and the positive sample minus the anchor and the negative sample plus some margin. And here it's 0.5. Uh, with, uh, with these definitions said, we uh, conducted three different uh, experiments. So first we look just the basic sentence level task. So we uh, even though this metric is kind of, or, or these methods are more suitable for the matrices uh, or, or long documents, we also want to verify that this works in sentence level case to have kind of some uh, some uh, verification that this makes sense at all. Uh, so this is just the STS benchmark, which is the standard sentence similarity task. Uh, then we had two, two full document tasks. So we did uh, one in Finnish news data. Uh, just to see how it works uh, if we have uh, different languages than English. So Finnish is in that sense interesting since it's morphologically rich. So it has a bit more different structures than English. So it could be that the approach breaks down when we use <clears throat> something other than English where kind of the uh, most of the models have been designed. And then we uh, do a similar experiment to the previous paper that I presented for with patent data. And these are in English and, and the same task of uh, separating excitations from A citations. Uh, I think this is the uh, least interesting part, so we can uh, kind of just skip. But here we can see uh, here the IC means that before training, uh, or what is the score? Uh, MC is after the training, uh, what is the score? And VT means the how much time it took. So here we can see that the transformers, transformers beat kind of the baseline static word embeddings quite like huge margin, and we see that basically always it's better to represent the matrices using the covariance instead of the mean. And interesting is that the the low rank beats actually all of these just with one component saved. The bad thing here is that because of how the optimization works, so you need to optimize through SVD, which is very unstable and very slow to compute. Uh, so the kind of the time usage will explode. So <clears throat> from that sense, it's not a not very useful approach. But at least you know that if you could make that part fast, get the uh, approximation yeah. approximation of the SVD. Uh, uh, low rank representation, then you can do better than uh, both mean or covariance. Uh, then for the full document uh, tests, uh, so first we used uh, Finnish news articles. 
So the process was here that we took uh, uh, 500, uh, 1,500 samples, which we split into training and test. Uh, then uh, we split the documents uh, to create the data set. We took the uh, took the news path, uh, news documents, and then we split them in the beginning and and the end part. And this uh, gives us kind of like this matching task. So we have to find uh, we have to match the beginning part with the correct ending part. Uh, so we fine tune this just for uh, fifteen epochs uh, using five hundred training samples and uh, hundred for the validation. And then we uh, evaluate the final uh, final accuracy with the uh, uh, thousand and five hundred samples. And here we can see here's so again uh, the initial accuracy. So no no training for the embedding model. Uh, here the covariance is actually worse in the beginning, but after training we can then uh, reach higher scores. Uh, here the low rank representations do not do as well as the full covariance, but they still are better than the mean. And here the fast text uh, seems to for some reason do nothing sensible. It completely seems to collapse in, in the uh, in the matching those documents. And interestingly, the mean is much better than the covariance, but still very far from the, the transformer based, which kind of makes sense since uh, you don't train these uh, train these uh, embeddings, you just uh, calculate the uh, pure representational power from in that sense. So uh, then for the patent data, so here the task is uh, kind of split, uh, separate excitations from I say the X, uh, A citations. So X citations are citations that are more stronger evidence towards uh, Accept uh, rejecting, uh, sorry, accepting the patent application, and A is uh, less strong. So we want to order them so that X citations would be always before A citations. Uh, here we used uh, 800 training samples and 200 validation samples, and then measured the final accuracy with 1,000 samples. Uh, here uh, we trained from the scratch at the tiny bird model. So uh, these are uh, uh, the, the model was pre-trained, but here we fine-tune it like basically completely from the scratch. Uh, and here again, the same same effect happens. So we get the covariance representation is uh, the best version. Uh, here, interesting, the mean is actually second, and it's not actually very far from the covariance. Uh, so uh, this could go like even within the statistical kind of sense, just just by a random chance. And we see that again the, the static embedding based are much much further away from the uh, from the scores of these transformer models. Uh, so to conclude, uh, so we can use the second order metrics. They are kind of approach that can, can be tried with the transformers. And if you use the full covariance representation, uh, the overhead for computation is just around a, a 33 uh, 33 so it's not not that that high um, even though it's much larger uh, uh, much larger representation uh, the overhead uh, the most computation goes anyway uh, for the transformer modeling so that's why the calculation of the distance is not that uh, crucial in that. So especially if you go with more uh, heavy transformers, the probably the overhead just goes lower and lower in relative sense. Uh, but one thing is that the finding, fine tuning is essential. So you need to fine tune for all of these tasks to uh, even get better than the static embedding case. The performance gains are not very huge, but they are consistent. Uh, so if, if you have the kind of the computational resources, you probably want to try the transformers, but, uh, it, it might not be that kind of silver bullet to solve, solve the issues. So, so, uh, depends on the case that you are in. And the bad thing is that the low rank representations are slow and unstable in training. So, because you need to train through this SVD transformation, they become very slow to train so there's kind of bottleneck in this uh making this low rank even though they are smaller and uh, smaller in size and and smaller in uh kind of computational complexity still 
uh, in practice they are much lower so kind of what, what we recommend is uh, trying out both and see which works because it's it's not clear well, what you want if the gain is small and but the computational cost is high then you probably don't want to want to use these methods 